Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And we've got beautiful spring conditions today. Prime time to throw a spinner bait and a chatter bait. Two of the most consistent baits for spring bass fishing. What I wanna do today is walk you through some tips and some tricks, some different modifications that you can do to really change your catch rate with both of these baits so that you can be more effective on the water this spring. Spinner baits and chatter baits are incredibly effective this time of year. It doesn't even matter if your water is clear or chocolate milk. Not at all if you know how to adapt your baits to the changing conditions. There's all sorts of little things you can do that make a world of difference. And that's what we're talking about today. We're going to start off really, really simple. We'll talk about some of the standard spinner baits and a quick modification that you can do to any spinner bait that will take your catch rate through the roof. Then we'll talk specifically about muddy water and how to adapt, then clear water, and then we'll end with chatter baits or bladed jigs and some tricks that you can do there with trailer options to completely change your catch rate as well. But let's start off simple. Not every angler that's watching this wants to know every little detail. Some of you just wanna know how to get out there and catch fish, and that's okay. So to kick it off, here are my two favorite baits, favorite spinner bait and favorite chatter bait. And you can keep it that simple. You can trust my confidence, go out and fish those same things, and you'll do great. So what they are, my main spinner bait, if I could choose one out of all my boxes, it's this guy right here. It's a bling spinner bait, half ounce, and I put a Kitek, 4.3 on the back of it. That's it right there. That's simple. If I could only have one, that's the one. For a chatterbait, if I could only have one, it would be a jackhammer. Now the jackhammer costs more than some of the other baits on the market, but there's a reason for it. It's incredibly balanced and incredibly smooth, and it's so consistent as a result. It simply works better. So if you're going to go out and put the time in, Put it in with a bait that you know is working perfectly. With a chatter bait, what is perfect? Perfect is a bait that starts sooner and has a really consistent vibration in that blade. That's what you're looking for. A fast start and a good vibration. It's that easy. We could stop right there and some of you will be good to go. Now for those of you that really want to get in depth with this and you want to change how you're fishing these categories, here we go. So let's start with standard spinner baits. This is a Revenge, standard Revenge, half ounce. This is a Blade Runner, half ounce, full size spinner baits, full size blades. You could apply this to 10 or 15 or 20 different brands, maybe 100 brands. Almost every company makes a full size spinner bait. To give you a comparison, Here's that bling in comparison, quite a bit smaller. The bling is more of an in-between spinner bait. Okay, so here we're full size. Now full size spinner baits are great. You can catch tons of fish on them, but they're not necessarily specialized for different conditions. Well, here's a trick that you can do because if you're fishing one of these baits and it doesn't matter what brand, I'm not picking on anybody, any spinner bait with full size blades you see how far that blade hangs behind that hook and how large those blades are? Those blades are moving a ton of water. They're creating a ton of vibration. In clearer water conditions where the fish can actually see the bait really well as they're coming in, they might get the whole bait. They might eat the whole thing. But as soon as you start getting dingy water, you start losing some of that visibility, all the attention goes to the vibration. The fish feel the bait. They don't see it. So when they're coming in, they're feeling that blade back there and it's behind the hook. They're coming in and they eat the vibration. They'll do it over and over and over again. They'll miss the hook completely. So it's really important with a full size spinner bait that you incorporate a trailer hook. Now you can also incorporate a swim bait trailer and I'm going to get into that more in the other styles because that's my actual preference. 
given a choice, I stay away from trailer hooks because I think I can do without it if I adapt. That's what we're gonna talk about here. But for the guy that wants a standard full-size spinnerbait, a trailer hook will do great things for you. Try a swim bait, try a 4.8 Kitek on the back of that or something similar. But if those fish are missing and don't be surprised if they do, you need to take that off, take either a three aught or a four aught trailer hook. And a trailer hook basically is a hook with an open eye. You put a piece of plastic over it and slide it on there. And now it's secure and that hook will stick out quite a bit farther. So when they come in behind, they get the blade and they get that second hook. Now here's a trick that you can do for any of these full size baits. And actually you can do it for any of these baits. But if you want to sort of hide that trailer hook because they don't look great, it's a lot of mass, it's a lot going on behind that bait. Here's an awesome trick. I'm actually going to do it to a bling just because it's easy. So I've got one sitting here, standard skirt. Notice how the skirt's all full length, it's pretty bulky. And again, I love this spinner bait, but let's pick it apart for a second. It's a thick skirt, one length. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. Let me just start pulling. Get all this off here. There's some thread on there, that doesn't really matter. We could probably leave that. Oh, it might unwind here. We'll take some of that off. Grab some scissors, clean it up here. All right, that's what that spinnerbait looks like with no skirt at all. Not something you would wanna go out there and try and catch a fish on. This is a replacement skirt. Now this one is Dirty Jigs. I'm using this one because I'm comfortable with these colors because these are the swim jigs that I throw. So I already know all my favorite colors, but there are a bunch of brands of replacement skirts on the market. And again, in the video description, just like every other video that we do, I'll link everything from every single spinnerbait to the skirt right down to the colors that I prefer. Everything will be linked down there for you so you don't have to try and remember this. So I take a replacement skirt, and again, it's a jig skirt. See the collar there in the middle of that skirt? I'm going to roll that down to one end, just sort of slide it down. Little further. All right, now see how much material I have on this side and how little I have on this side. Maybe even a little more, right there. Okay? We're going to take it with the long side up. I'm gonna spread it out there. Long side up, and I take that spinner rate right, and I put it right through the center of that skirt and through the center of that collar. Slide it up, up over the barbed keeper, all the way up to the head. See how much longer that skirt is? How full, or excuse me, how loose it is compared to the old one. The old one is shorter, compact, and very dense, very full. This one is spread out, it's wispy. This looks completely different in the water. Way more movement, way more going on, and it gets bit extremely well. Now, again, this is dynamite on any spinner rate, but if you want to hide a trailer hook, look how much room there is in there for that trailer hook to be sitting in there and it will still have a skirt pulsating around it. Huge difference with just a replacement skirt. You could do that to any bait. So that's full size baits. It's warm out here today. It's crazy that we've got this nice of spring conditions this early in the year. All right, next up, muddy water. With muddy water, I lean towards white. And now we've done full length videos on spring spinnerbait fishing and on chatterbaits with all sorts of modifications, all sorts of things that you can do. So in the video description, along with the baits, I'll also link you the in-depth spinnerbait video and the in-depth chatterbait or bladed jig video so that you can look at that stuff for the how, where, retrieve speed, different ways to twitch and work the baits because we already have great videos on that. This is about how to adapt the baits. So muddy water, 
a lot of people like to go to chartreuse in muddy water. They also like to go to Colorado blades, which is a rounder blade. It's got this heavy thump to it, an incredible vibration. I tend to lean away from that. I will mix chartreuse in, something like a chartreuse white, but I don't typically go full chartreuse in muddy water. I've found that white just does a dynamite job. Sometimes a little chartreuse helps, but I rarely need to go full-blown chartreuse in those circumstances. So for me, white is key. Now some different baits here. Notice primarily white. Two tricks for you. Here's the first one. White blades. Again, I like to stay with willow leaves. I like the vibration that I get off of a willow leaf, especially in lakes that have shad and smaller bait fish. I think a willow leaf does a better job of imitating the actual vibration coming off of those fish compared to a Colorado. It just matches what they're actually eating better. So even in muddy water, they seem to respond better to it. I do so much better with willows. So I love that all white. White bait, white skirt, white painted blades for murky water. Again, same thing here. This one, that's that bling again. This one, this is a war eagle. Again, they call this one coleslaw, but white on white with just a little bit of chartreuse and orange accent, just a little bit, which is an awesome option. I love to start with this because if they're not responding to it, I can pull that chartreuse and orange out of there. It's just a couple of strands, but it's a really good option when that water's truly muddy and I have the option, I start with it, but that's an awesome little bait. And then the last one, this is something called Lemonade Twist. This is a springtime thing. We talked about it last year and I'm telling you, it makes a difference in that really muddy water. There are times where they just flat eat it. It's an Indiana blade, is your main blade. So kind of an in between a Colorado and a Willow. And then it's got that day glow orange, little tiny Colorado on the front. That combination, it comes out of the south. It was something that they kept secret for a long time, but just like we throw those red crankbaits in the spring, there's a little window there where that guy with that day glow orange, and you can go full day glow orange too. Blade Runner, a couple other brands have these awesome red and orange spinnerbaits that can smash in the springtime but sometimes just that accent is all that it takes in that murky water to get those fish converting. Now, if you just have stained water, not true mud, just stain, then I still, I like to go with white. I back it down with the watercolor. As it gets clearer, I go to those more muted natural tones, but I start with white on white, then I go to gold blades on white. I like gold better than silver. Then I'll go to a mix, a gold and a silver blade. I'm just backing down back to clear water. If it's clear, I always like silver. Now that brings us to clear water. Clear water, here's a trick for you this spring that I think will make all the difference for you. Smaller blades. Standard spinner baits have great big blades on them. And I'm not even going to tell you what size, and it's because every company sizes them differently. So I could hold up two number fours or two number fives. They won't look anything alike. That's kind of gone out the window. So you just have to hold them in your hand. But standard full-size spinnerbait to what I consider a little clear water spinnerbait. Here's another one. A little clear water spinnerbait. So let's talk specifically about clear water. Most people lean away from a spinnerbait in clear water. I don't, I love it, but I like it under low light conditions and I like it when there's some chop on the water. When you've got chop on the water and there's reflection changing, there's light refraction, a spinnerbait can mow those fish down. When they're up feeding aggressively on bait fish in the shallows bulking up before the spawn, a spinnerbait can mow them down and early and late in the day, it can be amazing. 
But again, if you go to smaller than standard blades, you will get more bites. This has to do with large mouth, small mouth, spotted bass, everything. Smaller blades equal more bites. They don't always equal bigger fish, but they always get bit more often. So a couple of different baits here. War Eagle, again, this is the War Eagle Screaming Eagle. And that matters because the screaming part, they designed this bait to fish fast because it's hard to reel one with great big bait, with great big blades quickly. You start trying to crank that thing and that blade's back there whirring behind that bait. It doesn't want to go fast. So they made a version with smaller blades to fish faster. Well, I don't necessarily fish them faster. I just like that smaller compact package. This is an amazing option. The War Eagle, and I've got two or three favorite colors and I'll give you those. But again, small little blades, but it still has a stout hook. That's an O'Shaughnessy style hook where it's got that little bit of a curve to it. They hold fish really well. And even though this is a tiny little spinner bait, it's got a stout, stout hook. So you can get away with throwing it for giant fish. Now, if I know my fish tend to be a little smaller, or if I'm really trying to finesse a bite, go to lighter line to get more bites, that's where these two come in. This one, this is a Damiki, a TOT. Again, tiny little blades. And this one's very similar. Now, design-wise, quite different, but size-wise, similar. This is a Mega Bass V9. The biggest thing you're going to notice with both of these compared to the larger baits is that they're much thinner wire. Much smaller profile and much smaller blades all the way around. Smaller wire allows for way more vibration. So you've got a smaller bait or a smaller bait with a smaller blade. That smaller blade is turning way faster. It's giving off incredible vibration, especially on that light, light wire. And then again, you've got a lighter, smaller hook, so you can throw it on lighter line, and it's a lot easier with mid-size or smaller fish. That's what I like these baits for. Now, why am I holding up this color in clear water? Again, this is a niche. My standard, I lean towards silver or silver and white. I love the mouse color by War Eagle is incredible as an example. But again, I'll give you all those colors. I can get down a rabbit hole with these things. But standard shad colors, silvers and whites are my norm. But there's a special place for bright chartreuse in clear water, not even in muddy water, in clear water when we start talking smallmouth. There is a time when a smallmouth in the spring will lose their mind. They can see a bait from 20 feet away. It's clear water, and that thing is bright, brutal chartreuse. Throw a chartreuse and blue Kitek on the back of that. Let's put one on there. Now this is a 4.3, that's my standard size. That's what I like on all my mid-size spinner baits. 4.8 on the giant spinner baits, 4.3 on a standard, 3.8, so a little smaller than this one, is ideal for these little guys. I'll come back to why in a second, but let's look at this profile. Chartreuse on chartreuse in blue and crystal clear water for smallmouth. You just have to try it. Don't take my word for it, try it, but I think you'll be surprised by the results. It does not work all year long, but there's a time there in the spring where they are all about it. Now, why am I making those little adjustments in the size of my swim bait trailer? The difference between a 4.8 and a 4.3 in your hand, it's almost nothing. Let me see. I probably have some beat up ones around here. Here we go. There's a 4.3, there's a 4.8. This one's destroyed, but you get the picture. Very similar. However, in actual fishing function, they're completely different. A 4.3 on a standard size spinner bait, when you go to make a cast and this thing is balled up and flying through the air, almost never comes around and gets hooked. A 4.8 is just a fraction longer and it's the exact right amount to come around 
and get stuck on that point and ruin your cast. And it will happen a lot. So a 4.3, way, way better than a 4.8 day in and day out as a spinnerbait trailer. And then again, if your spinnerbait is smaller, you want to downsize even more. If it's larger, then that 4.8 is okay because the whole package is bigger. Everything is spread out more. All right, I think we'll wrap it up there for spinner baits. Let's move over to bladed jigs. I'm gonna keep it really simple. We already did a video in the past talking about some tricks that you can do. The main two, I'm just gonna to touch on them really fast because we've done it in depth. Standard Kitek as a trailer, 4.8 Kitek. If you put that on the back of a chatterbait, right side up, like you would think, and go to swim it, in my opinion, it looks terrible. What I like to do to change that is important. So the reason it looks terrible is because the blade is up here going really, really fast. It's shaking really fast. That swim bait on the back has this wide tail kick. Kitek has a huge tail kick. So you've got this blade and this wide kick. Blade, wide kick, it doesn't work. They don't look right paired together and the fish definitely notice. What you can do is take that same Kitek, turn it upside down. Sounds crazy, it's a night and day different bait. After we did the last video, I can't tell you how many times somebody has stopped me and said, hey, that sounded crazy, I tried it, I went from catching no fish to loading the boat. It's a real thing. It's because of how the water comes around the blade. This bait, right side up, that tail gets sucked up into that little vortex below the blade or behind the blade and it just looks terrible. It just doesn't work. But if you turn it over, it stays below that and it looks really good. The other option is you take a pair of scissors. I used to do this to all of my older beat up baits. Cut the tail off. Just the pad of the tail, just the flat part. Leave the actual profile. You put that on a chatterbait right side up and it looks really good. It gets back there shaken and quivering and it's got a really natural swim and it's dictated by the blade so they move with the exact same vibration and the same speed. That's what we've talked about in the past. Today, I'm going to make that easier for you. Innovation constantly happens. Companies are constantly improving. If you're trying to go shad profile, and I've got two different baits here, I'll circle back to the baits. We're gonna talk about trailers first. If you're trying to go shad profile, Hog Farmer created something called a, sp a spunk shad. It looks much like a Kitek, only it's much softer. It's got scent and it's designed solid bodied with a straight tail with these little bumps way out there on the end of the tail. It is designed as a trailer. Put that guy on the back. This is the 5.5, you can also use a 4.5, but thread that guy on there. That long straight tail works unbelievably. It's longer. Look how much longer it is than a 4.8. It's that longer, straighter tail. The vibration is a perfect match. Colors are amazing. I forget what they call this color. What is it called? Ghost Minnow. Well, you call it whatever you want. It's that electric shad look that I like so much. That really ghosty, really natural with that purple iridescent flake that we just swear about everywhere we go. They've got it. They just call it something different. Again, it's Ghost Minnow. It looks so good. And again, it's soft. So it just picks up the vibration from that blade and looks so good behind that bait. If you wanna keep it simple, all of your bait fish profiles, spunk shad. And it comes in all sorts of colors. It comes in watermelons and all, you know, every sort of shad or bait fish color you can imagine. It even comes in morning dawn because you could use it for other things. It would probably look really good on a Ned rig too in the smaller sizes. But again, perfect on a chatterbait. Now, 
if you're going with that craw profile, those darker colors, those natural tones. There are all sorts of great options out there and we've talked about them in depth. But my number one is a Yamamoto Cowboy. It's got those big exaggerated claws. When I'm just holding it here, you don't have a size reference. But look how big it makes this chatterbait. And in spring, sizes everything with these fish. They're out there looking for an easy meal. Look what that cowboy does to the overall profile of that chatterbait. Really fills it out, makes it a full size meal. The most important thing and why I choose a cowboy as my favorite trailer, it's just like that Yamamoto double tail grub on a grand scale. Well, that grub is magic on the back of a jig, especially in cold water, because it moves with almost no motion. Well, same thing here almost no motion, those tails are already kicking. Again, what makes one chatterbait better than another or one bladed jig better than another? The number one thing, how quickly it starts to vibrate. If you throw it up against a piece of cover and the second you engage the reel, that blade is chattering, you're in business. If you throw it up against that piece of cover and you go to reel and it's not vibrating and you have to rip it and then it finally starts to vibrate, well, now you're two or three feet away from the cover where the fish is. They're not gonna come charging after that thing when it didn't look right, right in front of them. They're not going to make that run. So a bait that starts immediately is everything. A trailer that starts to immediately is the perfect match. That's why that's my favorite. I could pick out 10 different trailers, but if I'm just gonna have one, no question, that's it. Now let's talk about the baits themselves because I keep my chatterbaits way simpler than my spinnerbaits. Spinnerbaits, again, I can go simple. The bling is my favorite. After that, I lean to those clear water baits. I love those little blades. That little war eagle is amazing. The mega bass, the Dumiki, those are all awesome options. Muddy water, I adapt. I only go to those big profiles when I have to. Well, with chatterbaits, I keep it even simpler. My number one is the jackhammer. Again, you're going to pay for everything that you get in a jackhammer. It costs more than some of the other options on the market, but you're getting an amazing snap, a very strong blade, a really, really good hook, an awesome keeper, which I've already hidden inside this bait, but look at that, it is stuck. I'll rip the bait before I pull it off there. All of that in a bait that starts ultra fast, that's what you're looking for. If you're on a budget, you don't wanna spend that kind of money. I get it. In my opinion, the best bang for the buck is this guy. This is the Chatterbait Custom. These little guys, super smooth. They start up almost as fast and they are way less expensive. You'll save a bunch of money, awesome colors. The biggest difference is that this guy has a five aught hook. The Jackhammer's got a five aught. The Custom has a four aught, but it's a stout four aught. Don't be afraid to throw it for giant fish. Both are awesome options. But if you look how much longer one hook is than the other. If you want a bait that you can fish a more compact profile, the Custom is awesome. Great colors, but again, if you want the best, if you want a bait that starts right away, that's super fluid, super smooth, no question, Jackhammer. How to fish them, we've covered that in depth in the past, but don't just stick with that steady reel. Mix it up, reel pumps, rod twitches. There's a lot of different things you can do that we covered in the other video, but you really want to mix it up because with a spinner bait or a chatter bait, a lot of your bites come right after you bump something. That bait's swimming through the water column, everything's vibrating, it's all good. It touches a piece of grass, and when you pop it free, there's a change of vibration. The fish read that as a bait fish trying to get away, and they come flying for it. Well, that's great if there's cover. You know, you bounce it off a dock piling, you bounce it off a rock, they're on it. But if it's open water, if you have none of that, you can imitate it by changing it up. So you can rip that rod, 
You can speed it up. You can pump the rod. You can chop. So you get that steady retrieve, throw a chop in there. Those little things can make a huge difference in your overall catch rate. As far as rods, I keep it really simple. I have switched to DC reels for these. Uh, and it doesn't matter where you are for price point because they make DC and all sorts of price points. They make it from a Metanium, a Corrado, an SLX. But given a choice, I like to throw it on a DC because a spinnerbait has a ton of drag in the air. So when it leaves your rod, it's going one speed. It gets up there, it starts barrel rolling and those the blades are catching the wind and it starts slowing down. You can backlash them and blow them up a lot and it'll drive you crazy. DC really helps with that. So I prefer to throw it on a DC. But the most important thing is that if you're throwing a larger spinnerbait, I throw it on a medium heavy. These are 7.2, a 7 foot is great also, but a 7.2 medium heavy is ideal. If I'm going to the clear water options, I drop down to a medium because I'm going to lighter line. I don't need as stout a gear. I'm not gonna hit them as hard on those lighter hooks. You just lean into them, they'll load that rod up and the more that rod loads, the more difficult it is for that fish to get off. But if you've got that bigger spinner rate with a stouter, bigger hook, you need more backbone, you need that medium heavy, so you can really hammer on them and really put the hook to them, and then you'll still load it up with heavier line. I love throwing both of these on braid to leader. You can also throw them on fluoro. That's personal preference. And again, we covered it in the other videos already. Again, as simple or as complicated as you want. I have a couple favorite baits and I can go out and catch fish on them most of the time. You can too. I'm sure most of you already have a favorite bait, but if you want to adapt, if you want to catch more fish, change those skirts. It's awesome. The way they look in the water is incredible and the way that the fish respond is incredible. Adapt your colors with that muddy water and adapt your profiles in that clear water, you're gonna have a blast out there. Springtime is bass fishing time. It's when everyone wants to get out and catch them because the fishing is good, the fish are big, they're bulked up in the pre-spawn. You need to be out there catching them. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, turn on that little bell symbol, the notifications, so that when new videos come out, you get notified that they're out. Because we do videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but we're starting to do bonus videos as well. And if you're just coming on the schedule, you'll never even know about them. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll talk to you soon.